Hello and welcome, boys and girls of the internet, possibly adults if you're watching, uh, to some more Minecraft. Uh, today I am showing you something I built, believe it or not, not something someone else built because I built it. Um, and it's kind of, I don't know, someone has probably got a similar design to this doing something exactly the same. But anyway, it's a villager storage system. So. It can be quite difficult. Um, I know lots of people use minecarts because that allows you to move them all over the place and it's just a lot easier. But if you're strapped for iron and you haven't got much of it, then you'll need wood instead because there's a lot of trapdoors. Gosh darn it, I always call them trapdoors. Always. There's a lot of fence gates in this, uh, in this design. And so basically... You can get to one villager at a time, you can trade with him, and then when he's annoyed with you and is like, no, I'm not going to trade with you anymore, you can press this button here, and you get the next one, and it's wonderful. Um, so you do have to keep in mind there's no safety mechanism with this design. Every time you press the button, a villager is moved on to the end here, and then floats up. Uh, I'll try and demonstrate that. Here. So you have to give it time between pressing the button um, to allow the villager to float up, otherwise you'll get two. Basically you'll get the villagers all bunched up and you'll break it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so don't press the button too often, but basically it's a really quick and simple, super simple design for storing, I think it's 16 villagers. Let me just count them, give me one second. One, darn it. Yep, I was right at 16. So, I'll show you a uh, concatenated design of lots of these all bunched together now. There are now 12 types of villager in the game as of 1.11, the last one being the cartographer. I don't know if I spelled that right, I literally just placed that sign. Um, so, this is a little combined concatenated uh, unit slash building of 12 of these storage belts, as I call them, um, together uh, to store 16 of each type of villager. And the most important thing is that they're not all just kind of, you know, sitting next to each other. The most important thing is there's a distribution system here. The distribution system is particularly important because you don't want to have different villagers in each of your belts because you got 16 sorry you've got 12 belts and you want the same type of village in each belt um, so I've designed this distribution system to allow that to happen so this is where your um, kind of uh, I don't know storage of villages is initially this is where they all come having been bred um, and you'll just have a pen full of uh, adult villages plus a baby because I accidentally spawned them in. Uh, so once you've got that, you will press this button over here, which sends a one tick redstone pulse to uh, the fence gate over here. Uh, and then that allows, depends how many you've got in here, one to like five villagers through. Uh, once you've got that many villagers here, um, they'll get stuck at the next fence gate and then you can press this button here to allow them through. Um, so, this is where the fun starts, because... What? what? Oh, okay. Um, the sign's messed up. So, this guy is a shepherd. So, I have shepherds... on the other side. Farmer, librarian, shepherd! Right, so it's really easy to get to the other side, by the way. You can either... Ooh, big lag spike. You can either walk around the end there, you can lower these trapdoors and walk on through, or you can jump over it. Um, this is the conveyor belt where the villager goes along um, before he's dropped off into each of the uh, storage belts. So we know he's a shepherd, what we can do now is go, okay, he doesn't want to fall down here so we'll keep this water on, doesn't want to fall down here either because that would be a fletcher, but we do want him to fall down here so we turn this water off. Uh, and that will then mean that instead of floating on over the gap, he will fall down it. And then we don't want him to go over to the toolsmith's one, so we flick the lever, and voila, the water stream now heads to the shepherd um, area. So, uh, all we need to do then, now that we've set up the system to 
direct him to the shepherd slots. Uh, press this button here to allow him through. And he will just float on along, skipping the first gap, skipping the second, um, basically going on to where you sent him. Once he's done that, it falls into that water stream, and eventually when he stops jumping, come on dude, come on, come on, there we go, uh, he will go on down here. And once that has happened, so that's basically the upstairs. Super simple, super easy, really quick. Um, he'll fall down here. And this is the storage belt, as I showed you earlier. Um, it's actually here and down there. And <clears throat> what happens here, you get stuck on this piston, just in case you've got villagers uh, like here already, um, and you don't want him to go through. Um, you can block him with this piston. But once this space is empty, retract the piston and open the fence gate to allow him to move on to that slot there. Re, uh, what was that called? Retract? Extract? No. Just make the piston go out again. Um, so now we've got our, our oh, see, um, now we've got our shepherd. Um, he is now in the storage system. Now that he's in the storage system, uh, you can just press a button and he'll move along and voila, we've got our shepherd. Uh, and that's how you populate the storage system. However, there is one more thing you can do with this and that is to send villagers to a different storage location. So I've got a farmer here and oh no, I've sent him to the shepherd one. Uh, that doesn't matter though because we can press this button and he will then float up here, uh, skipping the drop to the piston, float along the top, and fall down this chute at the back. Uh, now, you would have to decide that you want him going down here before he gets to this piston, because otherwise he'll just stand there and he won't be able to go into the water stream. But it adds a little bit more kind of safety to the system, so you can catch them if you realize you sent them to the wrong place when they're here. Um, but also it means that if your belts are full, uh, you don't have to delete your villagers. Instead, you can send them on uh, down this chute. So, like, if you've got 16 librarians already, you can send your 17th down here. Uh, and I'll just show you how you get to the basement. It's literally... There's doors here. In my design, at least. And you go down the ladder. And you're here. And this is where all the redstone for your belts are, so this is the pulse uh, shortener for your uh, fence gates. And um, then you can head down the staircase and through this door and, oh my goodness, look! We've got a shepherd and our farmer who we sent down the chute. So that's where the chute goes, and that just puts them in a bulk storage area. Um, pretty simple. This farmer isn't really meant to be here because he's not a shepherd. Um, but it just means you can bypass the storage belts. And yes, I am aware of what those look like. You don't need to put that in the comments. Uh, but another thing you can do with this area, see it's all well and good being able to send them on from the uh, initial distribution system. What if you've got one in your belt that won't trade with you anymore or that isn't as good as the one you've, you want to put in? Um, well you can do something really sneaky. So I'll just run over to the librarian one and show you. Uh, okay, I've got no librarians, that's fine. I'll, I'll add one. So here I have a, a villager in uh, this spot here. It is important that he's in this spot. So the one after your trading spot. That makes sense? Yes? So you've got the one that you're trading with, you press the button, you send them on to the, the next one, and that is where you can get them out of the storage belt. Uh, so what you want to do is, once you've got a villager here that you don't want in the storage belt anymore, you can press this button, turn off the water stream. Now that is fine, because if you've got other villagers here, um, they will stay there, they'll just sit in their spot, you won't be able to press the button anymore to move them on because the water won't move them on and you'll break it. Um, the one that's in the next spot won't fall down later um, because he'll be standing on this orange block here. Um, but once you turn the water off, you can then retract the piston. Before you do that, you can decide whether you want them moving on to the bulk storage areas 
or whether you want them oh, um, moving to the center here. Now, the reason you might want to move them to the center is if you want to kill them, so you don't want to hurt any of the other villagers there, or if you want to put them in a minecart, uh, which you could have running under here. I, There is a gap here. You could have a minecart. Um, I just haven't put it in. Um, so it depends whether you want to separate them off and move them somewhere else by moving them to the middle, um, or whether you want to put them in your box storage area. So by doing that, uh, you can, or to do that, you can press this button, which reverses the direction of the water stream. So they would go that way if in this state, um, and they would go into the box storage area in this state. So once you've decided where you want them to go, you flick the lever, and they fall down, and they go wherever you want them to go. So, I mean, that's it. That's super simple. Um, this this bottom bit is like more of a later stage thing because usually you wouldn't have villagers up until you've got full belts that you don't want in this storage system because that's the whole point. It's the storage system. You wouldn't want your villagers anywhere else. Um, but you've literally got a couple of dispensers here. It's pretty simple. Um, and the important thing is that here... Um, it kind of looks a bit wacky, you've got a fence and you've got pistons and blah, and you know, you've got water, but you can access all the controls from this area here, so uh, you can, you don't have to go running around like, oh, yeah, I want to move him over here, but I've got controls all the way over there, and um, I don't know, I, this, this video is getting a little long and complicated, but I hope it was useful, because I really, really enjoyed making this, um, it looks a bit crazy, right? It's kind of awesome though. Um, all the glass and the quartz and the orange stained clay and all the villagers. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Um, please let me know if you like it and uh, want to use the design. Let me know if you want a tutorial video. It's super, super easy to build all this stuff. Um, I'll just fly over here again and give you a good proper look at the design for this. Yeah. It's just a redstone. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Cool. So, um, that's it, pretty much. Um, thank you very much for watching this video about my villager storage system. Might make another one in the future if I adapt it. But for now, thank you for watching for like the tenth time, and goodbye.